Okay, we're going to do another one now. Uh, this is one from my uh, graphic novel, my labour of love graphic novel, shall we say, uh, Sleepy Hamlet. Uh, this character is Jennings. He's the uh, the uber efficient. Uh, I was, I forgot what he is now. He's he's the uber efficient butler. That's right of Hamlet's Hall. Um, now at this stage, I've just got the black and whites. I've brought it in and I've cleaned it up. There's lots of little dots here, and there's one there actually. So I'll show you what it is. I use the eraser tool, set it down to usually nine, but sometimes it needs to go to five and needs to get in a bit smaller, and just literally clean up any of the of the of the detritus, I guess, that comes from the scanning screen. Stuff you just can't get off. Um, there we go. And sometimes lines go into other lines and they don't look quite right. Like for argument's sake here, that line has gone through into his collar, so I can just clean it up. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. This time I have. And once once that's done, I then go into image mode and grayscale. I've already done that. So the next the next stage would be um, to put the black solids on. You can do that when you're actually drawing it. I tend to want to do it in Photoshop as it just seems I think to be honest with you. Uh, let's take the one down to five. Now you notice that there's a line here, where are we, that hasn't connected. So what we need to do is just connect that line. I usually do it with whatever colour I'm using. So if this jacket was in blue or orange or green, I would use that colour. But of course I wouldn't do it in the grayscale, I'd do it in the CMYK. Okay, so I think no, it's not. These two connected there. And I think that is, yes, that's that for that. So we just literally drop the color, drop the black in. There we go. It's an awful lot quicker than the other way around. And here he's got a bit of light and shade on his shoes. Yeah, it is an awful lot quicker than the other way around of, um, I'm doing it on the paper. Right, that's that one done. So now we've done all the sort. Oh, I'm talking about as I have finished his eyebrows. And when you get to know Jennings, you realize they are. You realize that his eyebrows are very important. Connect it. Stop it running out. Right, there we go. Now, stage two is to go up to image mode CMYK. Now, if you're doing this purely for the internet it's never going to go into print if you do rgb it's i don't know what it does i don't know what they do on the internet that's different to anywhere else but the colors are more true to what it is that you've got on the computer this is what i found i don't know whether it's just something that i'm doing and don't realize i'm doing it or whether it is an actual fact true but the colors do seem true but if it's going to go for print and it usually is i put it cmyk also to remember that any artwork that's going to go into um, to be used for print, you want to scan it in at 300 dpi. Right, so that's that. We've now got CMYK, so you to come down here to the Layers tab, click on this, create new layer, and then go from Normal to Multiply. Now you're now ready to start clicking. That does stuff. It was explained to me. And I could pretend to be very, very technical and say, oh, yes, it's to make sure that the chucky wobble that's inside don't mix with the uh, dig around wibble troubles. But I don't know what I'm talking about, so I won't say that. Right, are we ready? Are, we ready? are you all listening? Good. OK, now we're going to work on his face. So I pick, now I've got a skin tone here. This is my skin tone. So if I picked on that, I don't know whether it, there you are. It'll tell you it's, it's 250 red, uh, 98 green, and 122 blue. That's what it is, if you wanted to make it by hand. What I tend to do is I tend to find uh, another cartoon. Let's go and find one here, shall we? Oh, for argument's sake, that one. And I just take the eyedropper tool, hover over the color I want to do, and click. And there you go. I've got it. Right, there we have it. So now. Once again, you see, you notice here that with the line doesn't connect. Now, if I don't draw a line between there, this is what happens. Floods the whole page. We don't want that. We just want to select the area. So as with the black, as I did down here, can't see it now, but I did down here to connect it, 
I'm now going to do here, but I'm going to use the color. Connect that one there and that one there. I think that's everything. So we'll put the color in. Yep. All appears to be okay. With this little bit here, I use the pencil. It's quicker than going in between the lines. And if you do happen to hit, say, there with the color, oftentimes it'll spread all over the picture. It'll give it a, a thicker outline. It's horrible. So uh, try and avoid that if you... I didn't explain that very well, did I? It didn't work, that's why. I don't know why it didn't work, but you're supposed to sort of put the, the paint bucket, say, there. Not supposed to be touching any lines. Because if it does, um, it's just not doing it for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know why it's not doing it. Hey, anyway, what it does is it puts... Um, another layer of colour, a darker layer of colour, all the way around here. And it's just horrible. If you don't notice it quick enough, it means you've got to restart the picture. I've done it a few times where I've almost completed the entire comics page. Anyway, I am digressing. I'm waffling on somewhat. So let's get some colours down. Um, yeah, we'll do his little pinstripe trousers. Uh, was that connected all? Was that everything connected? Are you connected, Jennings? Yes, Jennings is nodding. There we go. Where is really sort of like close up here, I tend to just use the pencil. It's just quicker. Oh, I can see some there. I didn't notice that. So I shall colour that in there. Uh, yes, skin tone. Uh, I believe now I may not have his colours exactly right here. Because I don't have the page of his artwork as reference easily to hand but there we go I, th I think that's right and then we go for his tie which is red right well, there you have it actually I'll go into the background again the background tab which is there and I'll I forgot to finish his shoes off the light is coming from this way so the light is on there so I need to There, done. Come back to color and give it a little bit of, no, actually we've got a lighter than that. There we go. Ha, there we have it. Next stage and a final stage will be to put some shading around the face. Now this is what, uh, shading around the body in actual face. Because unlike Adam and Eve, which are down here, I don't. I used to do shading. I used to put some um, little bits around here, light and shade, but it just took so long, and it looked actually okay without it, just with the flat colours. So I carried on doing that with Adam and Eve, but with Sleepy Hamlet, it's a graphic novel. It's a little bit different. So right, what I did there was I I selected the magic wand tool, and that clicked that area there. So there you go. That's the magic wand. Now, I don't want these dots floating around the place, so I hit Control and H, which I believe stands for Hide. I then click on the skin tone and darken it a little bit. Click OK. And now I can, I can like I've got the mouse here. I click Hold. I run it along nothing. The second it hits his tone, skin tone, or the color I've selected, it comes through and disappears. Nothing on the white, nothing on the red, nothing on there. Back up here. Whoa, there we go again, you see? Okay, so I've selected that. So the, the, the light we've agreed is coming from this way. So I'll drop it down there. It doesn't, it's not like a, a proper painting, shall we say. We've got to get it absolutely spot on, all the shades and everything. This is a cartoon, so we're just going to get it so as it looks nice, really. That's, that's it. And then just fill it all in. So there we have 
Jennings now has shading. We'll do the same for his hands. Once again, nothing technical, just so long as it looks nice. There we go. And his waistcoat. So once again, the magic wand tool over here and click. Click on the orange and darken it. Sun's coming from over here, so his jacket will cast a shadow on here first off. So that will get done. And then probably down here like that. And there we have it. Done. Well, so it should be white. So we will click on there. I could do his trousers. All right, all right, we'll do his trousers. I don't normally, but just because we're putting this extra shading on and there's not a whole lot of other things going on around it, um, I'll do a bit on here. Like I say, normally he doesn't get shading on his trousers. And there now. Look at this. Look at this. Yeah, just like a professional. I'm just like a real one. Just a real cartoonist. Uh, right. And this here, I think a little bit of sunlight would probably come in through, through the gap there. So the rest of it can all be done. If we wanted to select the white area, but not all of it, we, you know, we didn't want to select there or there or there, just around here. So then what you do is you is you take you tick the contiguous box, and it just takes the areas that haven't been blocked out. Like um, it can't get in there because the black line is complete. It can get in there because it isn't. I'm not worried about that at this stage because all I wanted to do was to put a little bit of shade underneath Jennings's feet. So uh, hit Control and H again. By the way, if you want to get rid of it at all, you hit Control and D, which is deselect. But right, we'll just pick a color for the ground. Doesn't really matter. I've got up to 45, and we'll just give him a little bit of shadow there. There we go. I know it's gone into the uh whatever this is so i just go on to white and get rid of it as long as there's no lines filling out into there it's fine okay and hit deselect something else i've forgotten is his toke is toke kale coat tail get it right so it's a good background hit the black the reason why I got a background, explain that. The reason why I got a background first is that if I didn't, it do something. Oh, it's not doing it to me again. It's twice now. Normally, it, it leaves a white line around here. But uh, for some reason, it's just been a smart ass. I don't know. I don't know what that. Background. Huh. Weird. Anyway, there you go. So that's that. That is the colouring of Jennings. If we wanted to give him another bit of background just to stand him out properly, we'll put some yellow in there. Pencil one, knock it down to five. And then fill this in, and that down to there. And away we go. Paint bucket tool, and voila. We have Jennings walking through a yellow background. Uh, maybe we'll play a little bit more with that. We'll highlight the yellow so now only the yellow is recognized by the computer. We'll put that yellow down a little bit like that. And maybe we'll do some, because it's in a stately home, there probably have some dado railings, things like that. Now, the way to draw a straight line in Photoshop is get the pencil tool. Say I want to do it there. So I click on it. And then the control key above control is an upward arrow hold that and then just along with your cursor it doesn't matter if you put your cursor up and down here it'll just go in a straight line i'll do it again click it down hold the arrow down see i'm drawing like this now i'll start to put the cursor all the way down here 
it doesn't matter. It's going to read a straight line. Then once you've got that, and if you wanted to, it can go upwards and downwards, but it can also go a different way, like for argument's sake, I'll do um, like a cartoon painting. No, I'll get rid of these, and I'll do a cartoon painting. So they come at angles like th weird angles. So we'll start off there, and we'll hold the control key down, release the mouse, and then bring a line down here, and it will automatically draw it for you. Release both. Go to the start there, click on your mouse, hold the arrow key, take it down here. It's not going through him, it's going behind him. So you can have it whichever way you wish. See? And then click down there, hold down the arrow key, boom. and make it into a painting. So we're there. We'll give it a frame. And then, set. Look at that. There you have it. So you can do all sorts of things with this. Now, um, we'll just get rid of all those because I don't really want them. That was just to show you what you can do with it. There we go. Right, so we've completed it. And um, that's pretty much the end of it. So if you want to see any more tutorials or want to know how I do other things, then um, put some messages in the box down below. So hit the subscribe button so you don't miss anything else. And uh, we'll take it from there. Thanks very much. See you again soon.